Hello, it's me. I'm Hana. Yeah, I brought the uh, adult Bible study guide, the second quarter of 2023. The title is the Three Cosmic Messages. It has uh, seven, uh, 13 lessons. I'm going to read the se lesson seven, Worshiping the Creator. Read for this week's study, Revelation 1, 9, Isaiah 40, 26, 2. Uh, I read already lesson 7 and lesson 8. The Sabbath and, uh, and the end. Read for this week's study, James 2, 8 through 13, Deuteronomy 5, 12 through 15, Psalm 33, 6 and 9, Revel Revelation 14, 2, Peter 3, uh, 2 Peter 3, 13, and Revelation 21, 1. Memory text comes from Ephesians 3, 9, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. The essence, the essence of humanity's dignity is a common creation. The fact that we are uniquely, uniquely created by God places value on every human being. The unborn in the mother's womb, the quad, quadruper, quad, Quad Ripper Quad Ripplegic Ripplegic Yeah Quad Ripplegic Teenager The Young Adult with Down Syndrome and uh, Alzheimer afflicted the grandmother all have immense value to God. God is their father. They are his sons and daughters, God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the faith of faith of the earth. Acts seventeen, twenty four to twenty six. <clears throat> Ours is a shared heritage. We belong to the same family. We are brothers and sisters fashioned, shaped, and modeled by the same God. Creation provides a true sense of self-worth. When the genes and the chromosomes came together to form the, the unique biological structure of your personality, God threw away the pattern. There is no one else like you in all the all the universe. You are unique, a one of a kind creation, a being of such immense value that the God who created the cosmos took upon himself our freshly bodies and offered himself as a sacrifice for you and your sins. Sunday, the judgment, creation, and the accountability. If we are merely a collection of randomly formed cells, simply the product of chance, and an advanced African ape, uh, nothing more than life has little meaning. If we are merely one of the estimated uh, 8 billion people clawing at one another for living space, on a planet called Earth, life, lo life loses its purpose other than mere survival. In contrast, the biblical creation pro provides a reason to live in a moral and a moral imper imperative for living. We have been created by God and are accountable to Him for our actions. The one who made us hold us responsible, He has established absolute, even a world of moral uh, relativism.
read Revelation 14:7, Romans 14:10, and James 2:8 through 13. What does judgment imply about、uh, about such issues as、uh, accountability and responsibility? How are the judgment, the commandments of God, and worship linked? The message of the three angels flying in midair in Revelation 14 announces that the hour of His judgment has come. Revelation 14:7. Since we were created by God with the capacity to make moral choices, we are responsible for the decisions we make. If we were merely a random collection of cells,、uh, products of our heredity and environment, only our actions would largely be determined by forces over which we had no control. But judgment implies moral responsibility. In this crisis, our our of Earth's history. The judgment hour. God calls us to make decisions in the light of eternity. The first angels honest, honest appear to worship Him who made the heaven and earth, the sea and springs of waters. Revelation fourteen seven acknowledges that the basis of our worship is. The fact that we were created by God. Meanwhile, our ad- adherence to the seventh day service demonstrates our belief that Jesus is the, is worthy to be worshipped as our Creator. It reveals our acceptance of His Ten Commandment law as divinely inspired principles for living life to the fullest. Because the law is the foundation of God's government and a revelation of His character, it becomes the standard of judgment. Our faithfulness to the Sabbath commandment is acknowledgement of our commitment to live obedient lives. How does our understanding of creation influence our behavior? What relationship to heredity and environment they have to the choices we make daily? How can we, how can we, by God's grace, overcome character defects that we didn't choose to have in the first place? Yeah, Monday, the Sabbath and the creation. It is because our world. Anya, anya, anya. It is. It is because of our world so desperately needs the reassuring message of creation that God gave us the Sabbath in the mid 1800s. That when the evol- evolutionary hypothesis was taking the intellectual world by storm, God sent a message of incredible hope. We have been studying this message. Found in Revelation fourteen six and seven, Satan has made every attempt to distort the idea of creation because he hates Jesus and does not want him to receive the worship to him as our Creator and Redeemer. The Sabbath is at the center of the great controversy over Christ's worthiness. To receive worship as our Creator, God's last day message is one that calls all humanity back to worshiping Christ as the Creator of heaven and earth. The basis of our worship is the fact that He created us. Read Genesis two one three, one two three, uh, Exodus twenty eight to eleven, and Deuteronomy five twelve through fifteen. In the context of Revelation fourteen six and seven, uh, how do we see in the Sabbath commandment the link between creation and redemption as well? Sabbath is an eternal symbol of our rest in Jesus. It is a special sign of loyalty to the Creator. Ezekiel twenty twelve and twenty. Rather than being an arbitrary legal, legalistic requirement, it reveals that 
true rest from righteousness by works is found in him. The Sabbath speak, speaks of a God who has achieved for us what we could never do for ourselves. Scripture calls us to rest in his love and care each Sabbath. Sabbath is a symbol of rest, not works of grace, not legalism of assurance, not command, condemnation of depending upon him, not upon ourselves. Each Sabbath we rejoice in his goodness and praise him for the salvation that can can be found only in Christ. The Sabbath also is the eternal link between the perfection of Eden in the past and the glory of the new heavens and the new earth in the future. Isaiah 65, 17, Revelation 21, 1. The Sabbath calls us back to our roots. It's a link to our family of origin. The Sabbath has been observed continuously since time began. It is an unbroken connection back through time to our creation. It keeps us forced on the glorious truth that we are children of God. It calls us to an intimate, close relationship with Him. How is the Sabbath commandment to be hinted at in Revelation 14, 6 and 7? And why is it important to our end time message? See Exodus 20, 8 through 11. Tuesday, a not so subtle deception. Not so subtle, subtle deception. In an attempt to destroy the the uniqueness of our creation, the devil has introduced a not so subtle, subtle counterfeit. The counterfeit accepted by even some among us goes like this. God is the prime cause of creation, but he took long ages to bring life into existence. Evolution was the process he used. This approach attempts to harmonize the scientific data, data with the Genesis account. It asserts that the days of creation are long, in, in the in, indefinite periods of time, and that life on Earth is billions of years old. Read Psalm 33, 6, 9, and Hebrews 11:3. What do these clear Bible passages tell us about how God created the world? The biblical account is clear. God spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Psalm 39, 9, 33, 9. By faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. Hebrews 11.3 The first chapter of Genesis affirms that God created the word in six literal days of 24 hours and rested on the seventh. The linguistic, the linguistic structure of Genesis 1 and 2 does not permit anything else. Even scholars who don't believe in the literal six-day creation acknowledge that the, that the author's intent was to teach the six-day creation. The Hebrew word for day in Genesis 1 is yom, Y-O-M. Throughout the Bible, every time a number modifies the word yom as an adjective, adjective third day, first day, and so on. It limits the time period to 24 hours. Without exception, it is always uh, a 24-hour period. Also, and to the immediate point, if God did not create the world in six literal, literal days, uh, what significance does, does the seventh-day Sabbath have? Why would God command it? It would make absolutely no sense at all to leave the Sabbath as an eternal legacy of a six-day creation week if a six-day creation week never existed to begin with. To accept long ages, long ages of creation is to challenge the very need for the seventh-day Sabbath. It also raises serious questions regarding the 
integrity of scripture by attacking the Sabbath, Satan is challenging the very heart of God's authority. And what could be more effective in destroying the memorial of the sixth, sixth day creation than denying the reality of the sixth day creation? No wonder so many people, including Christians, ignore the seventh day Sabbath. What a setup for the final deception. <coughs> Wednesday creation, the Sabbath, and the end time. The great controversy which began in heaven millennia ago was over the question of God's authority. The challenge remains the same today as well. Read Revelation 14, 7 and 9 and 12. Summarize these verses by completing the sentence on the lines below. Revelation 14, 7 is a call to. Revelation 14, 9 is a solemn appeal not to. Revelation 14, 7, uh, 12 describes a people who, yeah, these passages make it clear that the central issue in the conflict in the last days between good and evil, Christ and Satan, is worship. Do we worship the Creator or the beast? And because creation forms the ground for all our beliefs, after all, what do we believe that makes any sense apart from God as our Creator? The seventh day Sabbath embedded embedded in the Genesis creation account itself, Genesis 2, 1 through 3, stands as the eternal and the immutable sign of that creation. It's the most basic symbol of the most basic teaching. The only thing more fundamental to it is God himself. Hence, to usurp, usurp, the, usurp the seventh day service is to usurp usurp the law's, law's authority at the most prime level possible. That of his identity as creator is to get behind everything and uproot it at the core. It is indeed to seek to take the place of God himself. Second Thessalonians 2, 4. Of course, the real issue in the last days is our love and loyalty to Jesus. But according to the Bible, this love is expressed in obedience to the commandments. First John 5, 3, uh, Revelation 14, 12. And the Sabbath alone among the commandments is be behind everything because it alone points to God as creator. Exodus 20, 8 through 11. No wonder it will be the, the outward symbol of the final divide between those who worship the Lord and those who worship the beast. Revelation 14, 11 to 11, 12. Considering how basic and fundamental the Sabbath is to everything else, it's hard to see how the final issue of worshiping the Creator could be about anything else. Many people argue that it makes no difference what they want keeps as the Sabbath as long as we keep on. How do we answer that argument with the Bible? And Thursday, the Sabbath and the eternal rest. The Sabbath is a place of refuge in a weary world. Each week we leave the cares of this world and enter God's retreat center, the Sabbath. The famed G Jewish author Abraham has a car course the service of palace, palace in time. Wow, palace in time. Yeah, time has, uh, God is the, God created the time too. He uh, ruled the time too. So, and uh, like a place, the concept and uh, time concept also, like uh, uh, we cannot see the time, but uh, we can see time too, because the the time day and night and the the season by season, and so we can read it. You can read my faith, and uh, we can read the nature. Yeah, the 
like a greater fl flowing. Yeah. So the palace, a palace in time, the Sabbath is the meaning for modern man, New York, Farah, Farah, Strauss, and Jerome. Jerox, 2005, page 12. Each seventh day, God's, God's heavenly palace descends from heaven to earth, and the Lord invites us into the glory of His presence for this 24 hour period to spend the time of intimate fellowship with Him. In the instruction, introduction to Hes. Hec Excess book on the beauty and the solemnity of the Sabbath. So, Susanna Hexel, his daughter, writes of the significance of the Sabbath in these words. The Sabbath is a metaphor for a paradise and a testimony to God's presence in our prayers. We anticipate a messianic era. era that will be a Sabbath, and each Sabbath prepares us for that experience. Unless one learns how to relish the taste of Sabbath, or one will be unable to enjoy the taste of eternity in the world to come. Page uh, 15? Yeah. X and V, so 15. At, uh, at, at creation, Jesus built a special dwelling for us. We can find refuge there. We can be safe there. His work is complete. It is finished. When we rest on the Sabbath, we are resting in His loving care. We are resting in anticipation of our eternal life. Rest in the new heavens and the new earth that are soon to come. Read Isaiah 65, 17, Isaiah 66, 22, 2 Peter 3, 13, and Revelation 21, 1. How does keeping the Sabbath point us toward to eternity? The same God who created the, the earth the first time we create it again. And the Sabbath remains an eternal symbol of Him as the Creator. Isaiah 66, 23. In fact, the Jews had, be, had seen the Sabbath as a symbol, a foretaste for of what was called in Hebrew the Olam Haba, the world to come. The message of three angels flying through the heavens appealing for us to worship the Creator is heaven's answer to the hopeless despair of many in the 21st century. It points us to our Creator, the One who first made all things, and to our Redeemer, the One, the One who will, after the judgment, after sin is uh, eradicated, uh, make all things new. And uh, He said to me, "Write, for these these words are true and faithful." Revelation twenty one five. How can you personally make the service of a foretaste of heaven in your own life and your family? Foretaste of heaven. Yeah, Friday, there are <clears throat> further thoughts. The reason provided to worship God is that He is the Creator in heavenly liturgy, liturgy, celestial. Celestial beings expressed the idea in a very succinct, succinct, succinct way. For you created all things. Revelation 4:11. One earth, God's cre creatorship needs to be emphasized as much as possible. So the I, so the angel says, worship him who made the heaven and the earth and uh, and sea and springs of waters. Revelation 14, 7, it has been correctly indicated that the, the angel is using the language of the fourth commandment to justify the call to worship God, uh, Exodus 20, 11. Within the 
Decalogue, the Sabbath commandment stands as its seal in that it identifies who God is. The Creator confirms the territory over which He rules everything He created and reveals His right to rule for He created everything. In order, in order for the dragon to succeed, he had somehow to set aside this memorial, Angel Manuel Rodriguez gets the closing of the cosmic conflict, the role of the three angels' messages, and publishes the manuscript, uh, page 40 through 40 and 41. Discussion questions. There are four discussion questions. One. How does the message of the Sabbath answer the great questions of life, such as where did I come from, why am I here, and what is my eternal destiny? Number two, dwell on the marvel of creation, dwell on the miracle of our own existence in this vast universe. What should the fact that the prime memorial of this creation, the Sabbath, comes to us as opposed to us going to it, every week without exception, teach us about how important the doctrine of creation is? Number three, in Daniel 3, uh, 3 and Daniel 6, uh, how do you see the issue of worship being played out in these inspired accounts? What is found in these accounts that can help us prepare and anticipate the challenge God's face for people will face during the crisis around the mark of the beast? Number four, how do we show someone who believes in the millions, even billions of years of evolution as the means of creation, the irratio, ir, irratio, Irrationality, irrationality of keeping the irrationality of keeping the seventh day service as a memorial to that creation. Yeah, there are inside the story. I uh, uh, quandary, quandary of two books by Clifford Goldstein. When I grew up in a secular J Jewish home. The essence of my religious experience could be summed up by how we kept the holy days. They tried to kill us. They failed. Is it? Nevertheless, I was always a seeker for truth. In the fall of 1979, my seeking took me down the path of the occult and Spiritualism. I even had a few experiences with astral travel, not knowing the source of these experiences, only that they were real. I decided to start reading about them. Thus, I walked over to the library at the University of Florida to get a book on the occult and started delving, delving deeper in it. At that point, I was a hungry writer who needed a job. As I was walking to the library, I stopped at a health food store in order to ask for work. A man came out, and as soon as I said something about the supernatural, he blotted out what? He dragged me into the store and locked the door. After I told him about my experiences, he tried to warn me about that. Demony influence, where he might he might as well have talked to me about Santa Claus as about the devil. Before I left, he handed me a book and said, "Please read it." Thus, with his book in hand, I went over to the University of Florida library and found an occult book. Because I wasn't in school, I could not check it out. So I sat down in the library, read the first chapter, and even practiced the first technique, all of which was very new to me. Then I went and hid the book on the shelves so that I could be sure that no one would check it out before I was done reading it myself. Anyway, here's the rub. 
I was walking through the library with the two books in one hand. I had for the first time in my life this book on the on the occult in the other. For the first time in my life, I had a book that the man in the health food store gave me. One book in one hand, one book in the other. Uh, occult book in one hand, then what was in the other? The great controversy. Uh, at ta- at the time, I was cl- clueless as to what was unfolding around me. A few days later, after an amazing confrontation with the Lord, I gave my heart to Jesus, and those occult experiences never came back. Soon afterward, I read the great controversy, a life-changing experience. No question, the Lord arranged for this powerful, timely, and important book to come into my life. Yes, I was a seeker for truth, and I found so much of it there. Join the global church in 2023 and 24 in the mass promotion and the distribution of the great controversy. VJ greatcontroversyproject.org for more information or ask your your pastor. Clift Goldstein, a prolific author, has served as editor of the, the Adult Service School Bible Study Guide since 1990. It is provided by the Greek Conference Office of Adventist Mission, which uses Sabbath school mission offerings to spread the gospel worldwide. Read new stories daily at AdventistMission.org. Now, here is the clipboard gold stain. Clipboard gold stain. He is uh, uh, so touched by this inside story. Yeah, 31 minutes. So let's go to uh, pray the Lord's Prayer. Uh, uh, today is the, the Resurrection Day on uh, Saturday. So the special, we just uh, celebrate of the uh, Jesus Resurrection by God's grace, by God's love. Thank you. So he's going to uh, pre- go and te- and Tell us, yeah. I I prepare my uh, uh, place for you and me, and uh, he will. He promised us, yeah. He will come again, and uh, he just uh, serve. He is serving, serving, and then just research each of each one of us. That's we call the. Uh, investigate or judgment and then if he or finish it and uh, he is come again with the the thousands thousands of angels yeah let's and he gives us a Lord's prayer uh, he just uh, he just come exactly by God's prophecy according to his uh, prophets by the, the prophet, and uh, he will become again by uh, the God's prophecy. And exactly. Uh, he saved the lady, us, but uh, he's going to be bringing us to, the, to his place. Like heaven or New Jerusalem. Yeah, let's pray with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever Amen. Ah, 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 amen. Amen. Yeah. In 35 minutes, uh, yeah, I read it quick because I wanna, uh, I wanna take rest today. But uh, my, I fixed my hair, so if I sleep, uh, my, ha my hair just messed up. So that's why I, I just read in outside with my husband. There are the, this uh, plump tree has lots of buggies. So my husband just uh, tear down and then uh, um, the shower, wash, wash, wash away the water with uh, the pipe waters. Yeah, so that's why I sit in here and take the sunshine and I'm just reading or of the lesson eight. Yeah, let's see you on lesson nine. Bye.